It was just the other day we were talking about Novavax and its phase one trial of its vaccine. We're expecting results in July and then they're moving to phase two. But now there's news that the company has purchased a Czech vaccine manufacturer, which will allow it to produce up to one billion doses a year of the vaccine if, and we hope it does, if it works. To talk more about all of this, let's invite into the program Stanley Irk. He is Novavax CEO and president, along with Anjali Kamlani, our correspondent who covers COVID-19 and coronavirus for us. Uh, this is a big undertaking, isn't it? We know companies are producing vaccine at risk. Will you do that as well? We have been. Thank you for inviting me. We have been producing vaccine at risk already. We made the decision uh, a few months ago when we started this program that, that we, would, we would do things in parallel and not in sequence. Uh, we recognized that it, when we showed that the vaccine was safe and uh, had the potential for efficacy in animal models, that if we waited until we got phase one human data, we would lose six months. We think six months is a, too important in a, in a pandemic. So, uh, in parallel, we, we started uh, manufacturing material. We, we made uh, what's called GMP material uh, that's suitable for phase one studies. As you noted, we started our phase one trial on Tuesday of this week. And uh, so the clock is ticking. And so we have to keep in parallel uh, manufacturing. So the vaccine has to be three things. It has to be safe because you're vaccinating healthy people. It has to be effective. You have to get a good immune response. We've crossed both of those uh, hurdles in, in animals, at least, and now we're doing that in humans, but it has to be scalable. And so, uh, so we found this facility, which is a fairly unique facility in the, in the world, and it has the capacity, as, as you just mentioned, to produce uh, perhaps more than a billion doses in uh, 2021. Stanley, it's Angelina here. Um, I know that you've partnered also with the Serum Institute, which previously owned that same facility, and you've also worked on uh, coronavirus vaccines before. So how does this all pull together um, in uh, helping your strategy and helping you meet that goal? Well, so this is what this is what Novavax does. We have a vaccine platform from which we've made uh, vaccines for respiratory syncytial virus, RSV, the biggest cause of hospitalization of children under one. We've just unblinded phase three pivotal data for our flu vaccine. And everybody knows you, we need to get a better flu vaccine. And, and I think we have one. And uh, we've made uh, vaccines for several emerging infectious diseases, including, as you mentioned, two coronavirus vaccines over the last five years, an Ebola vaccine and pandemic flu vaccines. And, and so this is right down our alley. This is what we do. This is what the platform does. It's, we've shown safety in thousands of people and um, uh, this is just an extension of everything we've been doing for the past decade. Mr. Eric, it would be helpful for a lot of us if we understood what uh, effective truly means. Is it 100% of the people who get a vaccine are 100% protected? Is it 70%? What is that number? No, it's a great question. And, and um, it is, there, there are many vaccines in development. And, and we all, I think, the industry is rooting for one another. We need more than one vaccine, and uh, because there's the the demand is going to be. But given, I, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but we have vaccines for 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 decades. What usually I mean, so that we all understand. For instance, polio is the polio vaccine 80 percent effective. What is this number we should all be aiming for? Many of the standard childhood vaccines have vaccine efficacy above 90 percent. And, and, and so they're, they're very, usually very, very high. But there are many vaccines, for instance, flu, a respiratory vaccine, like coronavirus is a respiratory vaccine. And it ranges from year to year, depending upon which strain of flu comes around. The effectiveness of flu ranges anywhere from 10% to 50 or 60%, but that's better than zero. And so, so it's good. It's, <clears throat> if you had a vaccine that worked 40 or 50% of the time versus nothing, you, you've, you've got something that's really important. So we don't know with coronavirus what's going to be uh, effective or how, how effective a vaccine is going to be. There'll be different levels of effectiveness with different vaccine. Vaccines are going to be developed. And, and I, my guess is they'll range anywhere from, from the 30 or 40 or 50 percent. And, and we hope that we can get above 70 or 80 or 90 percent. But, but uh, you know, we have to see the data. So there, there's a range. Stan, it's Julie here. Um, 
during this vaccine discussion, some people have treated it as sort of a panacea that when we get the vaccine, even you know, say it's next year, for example, that you're going to flip a switch and everything's going to be okay again. But in fact, it's going to take it's going to take time to vaccinate people. Some people are going to be reluctant to get it. How long do you think it's actually going to take? Let's presume we get a successful vaccine from someone you included next year. Um, what is then the time to her actual herd immunity? Well, it's it's a question actually for for an epidemiologist, uh, not for me. Uh, my my uh, goal, my role is to make sure that we have a vaccine that is as high on the effectiveness ladder as we can possibly get it. And the higher means it, it more of a panacea it's going to be. And then to be able to make enough doses for everybody to uh, potentially uh, get a vaccine. So uh, how long that takes for, for it to be actually distributed globally and, and uh, is, is an answer for the Tony Fauci's of the world. Stanley Angeli here. Um, we'll make sure to ask Dr. Fauci as well. Um, so when you're looking at the, the making the doses and, and providing that globally, I know that you've clearly have that as part of the strategy with opening up that plant um, in the Czech Republic and looking at other uh, and the partnerships. Um, but what is the realistic timeline of getting that production to the point where we can have it available for say a, a regular person um, and what is the timeline realistically for getting the first, you know, batch of doses out there? Right. Well, so we have we have production going on in the United States right now, and that production is intended to have vaccine available uh, in this calendar year. And so we so there there are a couple steps. We have to make the antigen, the the protein that comprises the vaccine. We make an adjuvant, which is, is a chemical stimulant. On top of that, they have to be formulated. <clears throat> and then they have to be what's called fill and finish. They have to be packaged into a vial. And, and, and those are all key steps. I think realistically we can make, uh, our goal is to make as many as 100 million doses by the end of this year, that by the time they're actually filled and finished and ready for warehouse distribution would probably be first quarter of next year. And our goal is to have the, uh, the Czech Republic uh, facility up and running uh, by uh, October of this year, so that we can be we can be at a run rate of 100 million doses a month by January of next year, and then it takes you know the, then it will take the 30 or 60 days to get it released and packaged, but for distribution in, in large scale, and of course what's going to happen or what what everybody predicts is going to happen is that it will be used first. There's going to be a priority, and it's going to be used first by frontline healthcare workers. People at high risk of of uh, with have comorbidities and and uh, have higher risk of disease uh, before it gets to the uh, general population. And how long that's going to take is is uh, again, it's it's um, we'll our goal is to make the product, and we have partnerships with people who distribute the product. Right, absolutely. And I'm wondering if you've run into, you know, there's been concerns about with this global race, this global access question, uh, concerns about nationalism and how politics are coming into play. What, have, what has been your experience and are you running into any of that? Well, not yet. I worry about it. Uh, so we, we have two big components, the adjuvant and the antigen. We are currently making uh, both of those in Europe. We will be making those uh, this year, both of those in the US. We have discussions in China, we have discussions in India. So we're trying to make it in as many different places so that we are not, we're, we won't be contained by, by border closings or constrained, I guess. Yeah. All right, Stanley uh, Eric is the CEO and president of Novavax. And thank you so much for answering these questions in a way that all of us can understand. I, I think you're one of the first who's answered that question we've had about efficacy in the last two months, and that's greatly appreciated. <laughs> all the best to you, sir. We're counting on you and your team. Hey, investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up-to-the-minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day, wherever you are.